No, no, John, you can't, you can't have it. You can't have it this time. Not this time, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna put this, give that back to Jeff, okay? Jeff is the champion. What? Well, yeah, I know he's stupid. <laughs> of course. Obviously. How is everyone? I hope everybody's well. Now, I'm, this is Friday night. The uh, SmackDown show just ended. There's a piece of paper down there, so I apologize if you... A lot of noises, a lot to be concerned about and worried about, but I wanted to make a video for one reason. I wanted, I made... Now, this was a very big night on SmackDown. John Morrison's first major title shot, right? Defending it against Jeff Hardy. Now, if you follow the review, guys, you know what a big deal this is. And because it was such a big deal, I made a special envelope. You remember the, the uh, WrestleMania bet envelopes? Well, I made bets. I made predictions, really. Here is my special envelope. Have a look at that. Tell me, tell me, look at that. Isn't that neat to see the superstars thing? So Jeff and John, because... <laughs> Jeff and John. So let me, let me just rip this open. And let me show you with what unerring accuracy I was able to uh, predict how tonight's match would turn. I made three predictions, and I think you'll see. I think you'll be amazed. Prediction number one. <laughs> number one, Jeff will win by DQ. It's one. Prediction number two, Jeff will turn heel. And of course, that's that's my standing prediction for all <laughs> for all superstars. Uh, oh, and then number three, this is the amazing one. Due to a mix-up backstage, John will come out with colored paint on his abs, and Jeff will come out with a little with a little glittery stones glued all over his face. <laughs> we call that a threefer. <laughs> I'm, uh, but yeah, Jeff Jeff won, and you know what? I guess that's okay. But then he got a beating from CM Punk, a major beating, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, are we looking at another? Uh, title reign where Jeff is beaten, <laughs> where Jeff is not there. Uh, so, uh, let me talk very briefly. It's been a while since uh, I've seen all of you and you have seen me. I am on the heels of a minor adventure. It's quite minor, so we won't talk about it. Just a minor adventure. And, uh, and we've got uh, a few things to discuss uh, that I just wanted to throw out there. Uh, but Jeff and John, um, you know... Actually, it was a very good match. I was very excited and, and pleased with the way it went. So, let's talk first of all, CM Punk, Knight of Champions, I thought he should have won. And here was what I was thinking. Jeff, okay, first of all, I think they gave it to Jeff for a couple of reasons. One, maybe to uh, ease the damage uh, done by the, uh, by the Punk screwing him thing. Also, maybe, oh, 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 somebody tell me what the situation is with Jeff and his contract negotiation. Is he going to sign again? Because, see, somebody said, somebody wrote a message somewhere, the news is that Jeff will re-sign. Although re-sign and resign are, are spelled just the same. So I still don't know what the issue is with Jeff. Is he going to re-sign or let the contract expire? I, I believe he's... Anyway, what's going to go happen with Jeff? Are they still trying to butter him up so that he'll uh, stick around? If so, that's another reason he would have won the championship. But I felt that Punk needed it more than Jeff needed it. Jeff is a rock star. We know that. Jeff doesn't need a title. Punk needs it, and I was hoping the feud would continue. And it looks like it's going to continue, but just under different circumstances. The beard is just, it's off the hizzy. <laughs> you see, I almost feel the need to go like this because I'm almost embarrassed by the gorgeous fullness of the beard, but no, I'm going to show it off. So see, you're thinking, see, so, so I'm starting like this and then I come up a little bit and you're saying it's, it mu that must be it. He must stop there. There must not be any more. Then I come up a little more and you say, oh my goodness, that must be it. And then no, there's more. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is very late, and I'm extremely tired. Now, oh, now, back also Night of Champions, Christian, and I'm trying to remember what time I started this so I can not waste too much time. Christian, I didn't think Christian needed to win uh, because Dreamer doesn't make a good champion. Let's be honest. I like Tommy Dreamer, but he's not a good champion. Uh, Christian was a good champion. However, I felt he needed to 
now move on. You know? How many champions stick around that long on ECW? Not a whole lot. I thought it was time for Christian to move on, but I guess not. We'll see how that works out. Uh, let's see. Uh, other, other thoughts. Ooh. So, I'm watching my Extreme Rules DVD, right? Where I was in attendance. And guess what I saw? Myself. I am featured. Prominently featured <laughs> in this DVD. And I'm actually waiting for my check. So, WWE. I mean, do you not have my address? I'll give it to you <laughs> if you'll send me my check. I'm really not prominently featured. I'm, uh, you see the, the camera swoops over the corner of the arena where I'm sitting. And I said, hey, that's the corner of the arena where, I'm, where I was sitting. And uh, I remembered there were these two black gentlemen sitting in front of me, right here, right? And so the camera passes by and I see them. But I couldn't quite remember if they were in front of me or over there or where exactly they were. So I stopped the tape. It was about a two second, you know, piece of footage that I watched over and over again, trying to find myself. And there I was, I found myself. And I was going to report to you exactly when you could find me on this DVD. If, if you could find me. And uh, then I decided not to, and here's why. Unfortunately, and I'm, I'm ashamed of myself uh, for this, but I've, I've put on some weight. It happens. And I'm working now to get the weight off. Rest assured. But, you know, the camera adds 20 pounds anyway. So I look like this massive, I almost look like Big Daddy V. Like a white, big dad, a white bearded. <laughs> so... I'd rather not, you know, display myself to the world in such a condition. So what I'll do is I will lose weight in real life. Then I'll tell you where to find me. And I'll say, remember when I was huge? Remember when I was a giant? So uh, wait for that. That's something. So root for me. Go, Scott, go. Watch those calories. Uh, so that's, that's that. By the way, oh my, I've got a great story about that DVD. And I don't have time. I'll tell you. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you in a, in a future video. I have to, though, but not, not right now. Brian Kendrick released. Saddened? Shocked? A little of both, however, since his heel turn, and I guess this is, uh, this is, uh, a par for the course for heel turns, uh, people become less flashy in the ring, uh, which is... Bad for somebody like Kendrick, who was all flash in the ring. I loved Kendrick in London. And I, uh, yeah. So, so to me, the heel turn killed his style. And since he was unable to find that and to get that back, I think that's what did him in. I wish him good luck, though, because I liked him. And I, he may or may not have a future. I really don't know enough about the indie scene to make such a prediction. Let's talk very quickly about face turns. I'm always predicting heel turns, face turns, but who do I think needs to turn face? For my entertainment, and for the entertainment of the audience. Do you hear the clocks? Okay, I'm going to pause for a minute. You hear them? Okay, now we're finished. I always feel the need to talk really quick and fast and loud so that nobody can hear the clocks. There are about 40 clocks in this house where I'm currently broadcasting. Uh, a fa uh, okay, so yeah, Big Show needs to turn face. I don't like Big Show the heel. Sorry. Um, okay, now these two. Now, I think for his career, D.H. Smith needs to turn face. He's just a big, he's a big dope. He looks like a big dope. Please don't beat me up. <laughs> Please. I'm still afraid of you. But, uh, yeah, just the big kind of hoopy doopy doo. That's what I feel like when I see D.H. Smith. So, you know, if he's any good, and I honestly don't see it, but he might be good, and I might just be thrown off by the whole persona. Uh, also needs to turn face. Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes. I think Cody, back when Cody was teamed up with Hardcore Holly, I liked him, and I thought he was starting to go somewhere, and I thought, this kid, that kid, is what I thought. 
But now, with Legacy, he just seems silly. Uh, speaking of silly, Matt Hardy needs to come back as a face because I really, watching the Extreme Rules DVD, I realized how ridiculous that whole cast thing was. Too far over the top. Uh, ooh, I'm glad, I'm glad my arm was off camera because it looked a lot like the uh, Heil Hitler salute. That would have been bad. <laughs> So I think I'll stop here uh, before I fully and firmly embarrass myself. And um, a couple of things that I'll mention. No, I'll, I'll just wait. We'll, we'll, we'll see each other again on Tuesday. How about that? And I'll tell you my Extreme, Extreme Rules DVD story. And I've got some other stuff to mention. And then we will be seeing you then. Adios.